Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So today, a uh, little bit different, uh, quite different actually. It's I'm not doing any painting demonstration today. Instead, um, I'm talking about more the sort of business side of art. So this video may be of interest or use to anybody who's thinking of becoming a full-time artist or a part-time artist, or even just if you're trying to sell uh, the occasional painting, uh, maybe to help cover the costs of art supplies. Um, we all know that art supplies can be really expensive. So anybody who falls into those sort of three categories, maybe the video will be of interest to you. So when people are getting started, um, let's say maybe they're thinking of becoming a full-time artist, they often ask um, some questions. One of the questions is how much art would I need to uh, create in order to, you know, be sustainable as a professional artist? Second question is how much should I uh, sell my art for? And that can be difficult, especially when you're getting started out, you know, what is a reasonable price? It, it needs to be fair for the, the person buying the art, but also needs to be fair to, to you, to the person who's creating the art. There is another third question that maybe sometimes gets overlooked and that's how many people actually need to see your art. And this is something that in the beginning I really underestimated. I, I didn't understand how important this question is. In fact, I think this third question is so important that the answer to that question can make the answer to the first two questions almost irrelevant. So to try and demonstrate this, um, I've just written a small uh, piece of code that creates, it has this little web page, very simple web page. And in the background, um, there's some, a little tiny bit of computer code. If you're interested, it's called JavaScript. And it takes some numbers that we're going to put in here. And when I click the button, um, it uh, multiplies those numbers together. So again, for those who are interested, I know it's not really a, an arty sort of thing, but as I say, there's just this little bit of computer code. It takes in the sum of the numbers and it multiplies them all together. And then it displays that um, the result of that multiplication. So it'll become clearer as we start to put the numbers in. Like I say, this is not meant to be realistic or exact or scientific. It's a simple a simplification of reality, if you like. It's mainly just to illustrate this point, how important it is for lots of people to see your artwork. So let's say we create a piece of artwork, we photograph it or scan it, and we put it up onto Instagram, say, or maybe Twitter. And let's say 50 people see that painting. Not everybody, of course, is actually going to like your art. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody has different styles. But let's say 20% um, of the people, one fifth of the people who see your art um, like the art. And then how many people, what fraction of these people could actually afford to buy your painting. So that's getting to the second question then, um, you know, how much should you charge for your artwork? Obviously, the more you charge, the smaller this fraction is going to be. If you reduce the prices, you could potentially increase this number, but then there are negative consequences. If you're trying to generate um, enough money to live off, or at least partly to live off, reducing this number is going to have a negative impact on your quality of life. But let's say, just for the sake of argument, we'll start with 10%. So one in 10 people can afford to buy your painting. There is another thing I think then, um, it's also how many people, what fraction of the people actually want to buy the painting. So they've seen your painting, they like it, they can afford to buy it, 
But that doesn't mean that they will actually buy it. There could be lots of reasons why they don't want to buy um, this particular painting or any of your paintings at this moment in time. Maybe they're saving up money for something. Maybe they're moving house next week and they don't want to be buying more stuff because then that's just more stuff that they have to move. Maybe they're in the middle of redecorating their house. Um, maybe your painting is too big for their house or their apartment. There could be lots and lots of reasons. But again, we're just guessing, but let's say it's 10% uh, again. So when I click this button, it'll just multiply all these together. And you can see in this case, we have no buyers or no possible buyers for your artwork. So again, to emphasize this point, it's really important to get yourself out there and for as many people to see your art as possible. We can't really increase this number. Um, you know, if there are other factors why they know they don't want to buy your art, um, maybe it's too big for their apartment, maybe they're saving up for something else. We can't really control those things. So we can't really change this number. We can change this one, but as I said, there are negative consequences. If you reduce the price, um, you're not really making much money off it. So long term, it's not really sustainable. The fraction, the percentage of people who actually like your art, um, maybe you can change that. Maybe you can increase that if you start painting in a different style or if you start painting something that's more fashionable or something. But if you start doing that, it means you're constantly chasing after trends and fashions and you're not really painting what you want to paint or in the style that you want to paint it. So again, long term, I don't think that's a viable sort of way of doing things. I think really you have to be true to yourself and paint whatever it is that you want to paint in the way that you want to paint it. So really, if we're going to increase the number of possible buyers above zero, there's only really one number left that we can increase. And again, getting back to that main point, it's the number of people who see your painting. You have to get yourself out there. And by doing that, you increase the possibility of actually selling some artwork. So instead of 50, let's say it's 500. Well, given these numbers, the number of possible buyers, we now have one possible buyer. Somebody who sees your painting, who likes it, who can afford to buy it, and who wants to buy it. Okay, so I can say a little bit unusual video this week, um, but I hope it illustrates that one point, even if it is in a bit of a labored way. Really, you've got to increase this number. I think when you're starting out, and this is something I definitely didn't do myself and I regret it, focus on this number. How many people are actually seeing your artwork? Get it out there on you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, on all different sort of social media platforms. If you have your own website, and I definitely recommend, especially if you're trying to do this in a serious way, to get your own website, put your artwork onto that. And even offline as well, of course. Um, at the moment, it's a bit tricky with quarantine and lockdown and all those sort of things. But when, if or when there's all of this gets back to normal, we can maybe approach cafe owners or restaurant owners and see if they would be prepared to maybe hang one or two of your paintings on a wall or something like that. You can get more people seeing your artwork in offline as well as online. Okay. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, just click on the big red button below and hopefully see you in the next video.